Hello. Hi, Mary. How are you? I'm good. Happy that I'm talking to you. Likewise. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of today's anatomy question. Our topic, what stands before us is lower back pain, which is a constant complaint, constant feedback from yoga students. Before we dive in, I'll just introduce Mary Richards, yoga teacher, anatomy expert, and mom's uh, lead therapeutics anatomy teaching assistant, Judith Hansen Lasseter, my mama. Um, Mary's working on a master's of science in yoga therapy, which sounds extremely grand. Um, and she specializes in joint health education. So she's joining us from Maryland, and we're working on an experiential anatomy digital course, which is launching next year. Um, <laughs> I get so excited. This is why you're the perfect teacher for this material, because you literally, you love it that much. I really do. I love it so much. And most it's people think anatomy is boring. Oh, yeah, you know, and this is one thing that Judith and I are so excited about with experientialanatomy.yoga is we're going to convert you to <laughs> the to the to the club of anatomy geeks because anatomy is it, uh, the way it's often taught it is very dry but anatomy is rich and delicious and juicy and well i have to say in my teaching teaching yoga the more i learn about anatomy the more empowered i feel um, and that, that actually relates, it ties in perfectly to this question. So I, sometimes students come to me and they say, I have lower back pain, um, or I had pain when I did that pose. And, you know, is yoga causing lower back pain? Can you talk to us just a little bit of, from an anatomy perspective? What's going on with all of our lower backs? Yeah, okay. So yoga asana can certainly contribute to low back pain when, uh, because we're asking the spine to move in all different directions. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to make sure when we do articulate the spine and understand that the spine is designed to move, it's very architecture is mm -hmm. geared toward movement. But there are instructions that have proliferated within the yoga community that are based on aesthetics, how okay. something looks versus function. Okay, that's really, uh, and that's a very interesting hypothesis. Go on. <laughs> okay, so let's say um, you have a student who comes to you and says, um, when I'm standing in Tadasana, my low back hurts. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 to one, they're tucking their tailbone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they've actually destabilized their lumbar spine. And if you, you look at the structure of the vertebral column, the bones get larger as you move down toward the pelvis. And this is for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's to bear weight. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and um, so if you tuck your tailbone when you're in a, in a standing posture, you have diminished the vertebral column's integrity in such a way that it can no longer effectively bear weight. That sounds so terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so why, okay, so, you, but that makes a lot of sense though. I, the first time I've actually ever heard someone articulate it that way, that we're, we're choosing an aesthetic reason to tuck the tailbone because we think that that straight line looks more stable. Yeah, but there, if you look in nature, there mm -hmm. are no straight lines. Mm -hmm. Straight lines are an entirely um, human-made con construct. Yeah. It is the very curves of the vertebral column that give it its stability. And you'll often hear from students in backbending practice. Mm -hmm. Oh, my low back, my low back. Guess what? They're tucking their tailbone when they're back bending too. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's where, they, that's where I hear it. I hear it a lot in if I teach a restorative, like a passive back bend, even something. I, and when I do it, and my body feels so delicious, and then one or two students will sometimes say, uh, "My lower back hurts." Yeah, because they were tucking. 
because they have been they've been socialized, trained to override. This is my opinion. Okay, <laughs> opinion alert. Uh, <laughs> That's something mom always says. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so they've been socialized to think in terms of straight lines and to think that if they talk, oh, well, that strengthens my abdominals and that strengthens my low back. Wait a second. Tugging the tailbone doesn't strengthen the abdominals? No, not. And here's the thing. Functionally, when you're in back extension, when you're doing, whether it's cobra pose mm -hmm. or upward facing bow or, or uh, dhanurasana, whatever mm -hmm. it is, the intent, in my opinion, the primary functional intention of practicing back extensions is to actually stretch your abdominals. Okay. Yet, yet people yeah. are instructed in class, for instance, in Urdhva, Urdhva Dhanurasana or in bridge pose, mm -hmm. direct your tailbone between your knees. Yeah. That's sneaky tucking. Lengthen your tailbone. That's I Yes, that. that is sneaky tucking. That is euphemistic language for putting your pelvis in a in a posterior tuck. Mm -hmm. And and what that does then convenient <laughs> <laughs> spine alert. What that does. Yeah, yeah, show us. Is it takes you out of joint. It's hard to see. So it 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 wait, takes wait, wait, you, it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it takes you out of joint at L5 S1. What? So you've lost all of the weight bearing capacity yeah. of your pelvis. That looks so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, but wait, wait, wait. So I'm sitting right now on the floor, for example, in uh -huh. in flexion. I'm a little bit rounded. I'm towards yeah. my the, my computer's on a coffee table and I'm a little bit so is, is that out of joint in my lower back? Okay, yes. In order to sit, and I'm sitting on a big bouncy ball, mm -hmm. <laughs> in order to sit, we have to, the sacrum has to move up. Mm -hmm. It has to unwedge. Mm -hmm. And the lumbar spine goes into flexion. Right. But that's normal because we're sitting. Mm -hmm. We're in flexion. So that tuck occurs naturally. Right. And what happens when we're doing back extensions is we are overriding mm -hmm. the natural passive movements at L5S1. Okay. Okay. So we are, uh, we are applying a top-down idea onto the body. And I believe that if you want to uh, alleviate and eventually eliminate, in an ideal world, eliminate low back pain when you're practicing back bends, back bend more. <gasps> <laughs> what? You're blowing back. my mind. <laughs> back bend more. Okay. Let your tailbone drip down toward the floor. Mm -hmm. Or if you're doing cobra pose, lift your tailbone toward the ceiling. Okay. When you're lying on your belly and you're doing cobra, lift your tailbone up. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I want to ask you one follow-up question, but I'm af afraid of opening a can of worms. But I just want you to I just want you to say yes or no answer. <laughs> okay. So let's say I'm doing word vidanyarasana, full wheel, a back bend. I'm lying on my back. I put my arms up. I press all the way up into a back bend. Mm -hmm. I have heard th thousands of times to turn my toes in or make my feet parallel to the edges of the mat. But what yes. I notice it from a kind of sensation perspective is that I almost always want to turn my feet out when I press up. Yeah, of course you do. Uh, so that's a, that's normal mm -hmm. that, okay. Because why, why your feet want to turn out is because your gluteus maximus, mm -hmm. your bum, your bum muscles. Known in Austrian German as the Popeshi. My favorite <laughs> word for the butt, the poke So those muscles, their dharma yeah. is to lift, the, is to extend the hip. Right. Okay. And that's what you're doing when you're doing back extensions is you're also extending your hip. Right. Hip, right. Yeah. So those muscles are active. The problem with that, when you're doing 
a closed chain, meaning your hands and your feet are secure, anchored to a surface, is that you then, if you turn your feet out, you jam the big hip bones, the ilia, into the sacrum and it creates a bony block, Okay. which then inhibits the lumbar extension. Okay, wait, show us on the spine. Okay. Where's the ilia in the, <laughs> okay. in the sacrum? Okay. This is way too much fun. <laughs> okay, so th this is an ilium. Yeah. So two, these are the ilia. Mm -hmm. You can see how large these bones are. Mm -hmm. You can see the beautiful sacrum, mm -hmm. this wedge-like bone. Well, if we turn our thigh bones, mm -hmm. if, we, if we let our feet turn out, mm -hmm. what happens, these bones go uh -huh, and uh -huh. push in. They push into the sacrum. Right. And that inhibits the play in the sacrum. Uh -huh. Okay? Because when... This poor guy needs fusion. <laughs> when we move into lumbar extension, yeah. the sacrum naturally nods forward. Okay. But if you turn your feet out, your hip bones are then pushing into that sacrum, and that can't happen. Okay. So, yeah, because I was thinking when I when you move and you lift a bunch of boxes, you always, you turn, you naturally turn your feet out to lift something heavy. Yeah, but you're not doing extension when so, you do that. And that's absolutely appropriate. If you're going to lift a big, heavy box, take a wide stance, mm -hmm. turn your feet out mm -hmm. and get the glutes really engaged because one of the primary functions of the gluteus maximus is to take load out of the low back. Uh huh. Okay. So my summary from what I hear you saying is that it's, it's like we can turn or we can ask our students to turn their feet out when they're pressing up, just when they're doing the work to get up and then turn the feet parallel with the mats in a big back bend or Um, yeah, you could try that. Sure. Uh, I've personally never offered that instruction. I'd be really interested to hear mm -hmm. how it affects people mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm really curious about that. I've taken a different approach. What do, in how that, do you teach it? Yeah. <laughs> so I like to sushi roll people. So I'll take a block uh -huh. and place it between the thighs, and then I might strap them. Okay. Around the thighs, it, I think of it as a sushi roll, <laughs> <laughs> and then have them go up because I don't want any interference with that lumbosacral rhythm. Okay, that's fascinating, but, Mary. So you are the definition of an anatomy expert <laughs> slash nerd. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us. There's going to be many more of these to come. They're just too much fun. They and, really are. Thank you. <laughs> I want to encourage our viewers to go to www.experientialanatomy.yoga. Put in your email, and through the magic of the internet, you'll get updates about this series and about our digital course for yoga teachers that's coming in 2017. Yes. Launching. Yes. I love that word. It's launching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mary. Okay. Namaste. Namaste, Lizzie. Bye.